Hi, and welcome to week 30 of economics. So this week, we'll be summarizing the role of international investment and foreign aid in economic development. We'll be analyzing the functions of international economic institutions in the global economy. Uh, then we'll be summarizing the political and economic changes experienced by Russia since the fall of communism. And then we'll move on to China and India and we'll analyze the reasons for their economic growth in recent years. So, we begin with international investment and foreign aid play, uh, as they play a crucial role in fostering economic development in countries around the world. International investment, often in the form of foreign direct investment, uh, FDI, provides capital, technology, and expertise to recipient countries, stimulating economic growth and creating employment opportunities. Foreign aid, on the other hand, typically provided governments with uh, an international organization uh, with pro typically, excuse me, typically provided by governments and international organizations supports development initiatives such as infrastructure projects, education, and healthcare. Both forms of support can help alleviate poverty, promote sustainable development, and improve living standards in recipient countries. Now, international economic institutions, such as the International Monetary Fund, World Bank, and World Trade Organization, play uh, critical roles in shaping the global economy. The IMF provides financial assistance and policy advice to member countries facing economic crises, promotes monetary cooperation, and monitors global economic trends. The World Bank provides loans and grants for development projects in low- and middle-income countries, focusing on poverty reduction and sustainable development. The WTO, World Trade Organization, facilitates international trade negotiations, implements and enforces trade agreements, and resolves disputes between member countries, promoting economic growth and stability through trade liberalization and rules-based tra trade relations. Now moving on to the political and economic changes experienced by Russia since the fall of communism, so since then, Russia has undergone significant political and economic changes. The transition from a centrally planned economy to a market-oriented one brought about market reforms such as privatization, deregulation, and liberalization of trade and investment policies. However, this period also saw the rise of powerful oligarchs who wielded considerable influence over the economy and politics. Economic growth has been accompanied by challenges, of course, such as corruption, income inequality, and dependence on natural resource exports. Despite these challenges, Russia remains a major player in the global economy and continues to pursue economic modernization and diversification efforts. Finally, we'll take a look at China and India. So China and India have experienced significant economic growth in recent years driven by various factors. In China, rapid industrialization, export-led growth, and government policies promoting investment and innovation have propelled the country's economic expansion. India's growth, on the other hand, has been driven by the booming information technology sector, increasing domestic consumption and economic reforms aimed at liberalizing trade and investment. Both countries have benefited from globalization urbanization, a growing, and a growing middle class, which have spurred investment, consumption, and entrepreneurship, contrib contributing to their sustained economic growth. So thank you for following along. I look forward to seeing you all and working with you in class. Thank you.